And now, we turn to the world of sports. The football season is upon us, and that means it's time to get ready for your fantasy football drafts. The ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers is the Cat's Pajamas, and only tool you need. The best rankings in the business. Sleepers, breakouts, values. It's even got a free companion app. Don't be a pigeon-livered foozler. The Ultimate Draft Kit will keep you on the up and up and keep all the hornswogglers at bay. Don't even think about entering a fantasy football draft without it. Don't be a square. Head to ultimatedraftkit.com today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Happy Mock Draft Friday. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers, joining you. Big draft weekend. One of the biggest of the year, if not the biggest. Um, we're so close to football. It's time. And so uh, we want to get you prepped up. And uh, mock draft is a good way to do that. Yeah, there's football tonight. I noticed this year we have omitted the entire preseason. There is no is not football time until real week one kickoff, Mike. Yeah, the... The preseason is just – it's not what it once was. So, I mean, I'm excited. I like the preseason. I watch as much as I can endure. But, you know, it's it's not it, – it will be soon, though. It will be the real football time. Well, we have uh, – we've got news to talk about before we get into our mock draft. And today we're going to have the Deucers. We'll all be picking different teams. But then we've got um, four members of our team taking up some of the mock draft as well. So it's going to be a little bit of a different ride than we've been used to. It should be fun. It should get us prepared. Uh, yeah, people people have been saying, you know, when you mock draft against a computer, it's helpful. That is a good resource. Yeah. It's a good tool. It is not quite as good as being able to mock draft with real people. Or oftentimes when we mock draft, like we've got this uh, this doc for our League of Record. I call it the Skeleton Key. You, you can find links online for it. But um, – we do it by hand. Like I will draft every other person based on what I know. And people have been saying like, you know, the, these, these drafts sometimes are too easy because the computer, we want to draft against other people. They just didn't know that the other people we would find would be worse than the computer. Yeah. Take a computer and then like, I don't know, like take out some of the Ram. Yeah. It's or missing the, some ones and zeros. Right. I mean, and, and then you then, get deucers. So, yeah. Well, I, that didn't last long. I, I told them I probably wouldn't talk about their teams. I wouldn't make fun of them. But I was talking to them as a group, and as a group, I, I kind of let myself jump right yeah, in there. we can't really help ourselves. The water's warm. Oh. I'm, I'm not saying nothing over here. No. Are you, you are in your heart. You're afraid they're going to like put up a fight in the draft? What? What? Why would well, I be afraid of them? No, there, he there it is. There he is. <laughs> We have a mock draft shortly. We've got a big trade to talk about. We're recording this episode a little bit earlier than we normally do um, because we are heading to Los Angeles for a live west. show. Yeah, on Saturday evening. Tickets, uh, a handful available at ballerslive.com if you want to get in there. And the big announcement this week, and I checked the count this morning before I recorded, we are up over 8,000 people in the Megala Bowl, the, the world's largest fantasy league each and every year. It's a great time. It's a chance to come and draft with the Foot Clan, and you can learn all about how to join at megalobowl.com. Like I said, up over 8,000 over the last couple of days have joined, and you can pick your draft spot. We're drafting August 31st through September 4th. Your draft time. Draft time. Yeah, you don't get to pick where you. Yeah, I, I, yeah that's I didn't fair. Want that's fair. To get no, crossed. it's fair. You don't get to pick where you're at in the draft. Just when you are available to draft. Yes, but we have a bunch of times in there to to kind of meet everybody's schedule. Yeah, several days, a couple of times each day, and then the winner of the Megla Bowl every year gets to play with us in the next Listener League automatically. So if you don't have the talent, creativity, uh, personality to like <laughs> win 
the oh, the man. submission just, process. You can just you could just automatically get in by beating everybody in the bag. You could have gone like the good fortune to be selected, but you went with like they're devoid of I'm, talent, ability, skill, personality. You, know, you are on I'm just ready to dunk on people, man. What's the coffee situation this morning? Because we know you've been bouncing around with the caffeine. You you've been testing different brews, and some of them are impacting your car cardiovascular system differently. This morning was a double espresso. It feels like it. It does. It really does. It does. All right, I'm looking for Woo! Let's walk draft, baby! News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, we did have big news this morning uh, when we're recording this show. So you're listening to this. This happened yesterday. The Eagles and Commanders interdivisional trade took place, and it's a big one. Um, it's a big one for your future hopes and dreams of a player that had a lot of potential as a first-round wide receiver who had a nice rookie season and is no longer a member of the Washington Commanders. Jahan Dotson, you know the uh, the vibes? The vibes were spot on with Jahan <laughs> yeah, Dotson. We, yes, they were. We had said that the team is just saying some things about Jahan Dotson that we don't like, the fact that they're still trying to figure out who a wide receiver two is. Well, it's not Jahan Dotson because he's been shipped out the door. To the Philadelphia Eagles, the Eagles send a third and seventh. The commanders sent Jahan Dotson and a fifth. The Eagles had been really looking to find somebody to step up as a wide receiver three in this offense. That's why you got the Paris Campbell acquisition. That's why you had talk of Johnny Wilson. And Jahan Dotson is who they went after. And it's close to the season. This is a pretty big deal. Well, he... he doesn't need to learn a playbook. He just needs to learn, okay, when you're on the field, uh, you run that way. You run down the field as fast as you can, Dotson. It is a, I think, a valuable but not fantasy consequential pickup for the Eagles because barring injury, I don't think any of us are looking at Dotson as viable in any capacity. He would be, at best, an undrafted gym type of player if – an injury took place. Yeah, and and from a dynasty perspective, I think the I actually have, I have a sound effect for oh. his dynasty. Oh, yeah, is, that, is it similar to a falcon? Oh, oh man! Oh, did you want me to go? Yeah, I thought this is more indicative. Yeah, of I his I, actual value <laughs> is currently circling just, just keep the drain. Talking. He did. Let's keep talking, and we'll I, find. I, did it. they Moving hide? On. Did they hide the toilet from me, or am I just blind? I I don't know. Whatever. All right. Well, there was going to be. Imagine a, a toilet sound. <laughs> there it is. There it I is. I still don't see it, Al. I'm sorry. I right. I think he's good for uh, a couple long touchdowns, though, for Jalen Hurts. So the interesting thing on the commander's side is that we know Terry McLaurin is the number one bona fide, you know, highest target option in the offense for Jaden Daniels. We had heard and seen on the field through two preseason games a rapport built with Diami Brown. He was on the field way more than we expected last year because we hoped Jahan Dotson was – like, this kind of happened. Like, the team kind of – mind you, they changed head coaches and offensive coordinators, but we were hit in the face with the Jahan Dotson disappointment early last year, and we continuously would come in here and say, Diami Brown caught the touchdown today. Or, you know, it was uh, – obviously they had Curtis Samuel in the offense, and it wasn't Dotson. Now – Dammy Brown profiles to line up outside opposite of Terry McLaurin. Didn't take me long, but I watched every Dammy Brown snap this morning. <laughs> every route. You saw all 168 yards on the season? I saw all Sam Howell missing a burner down the field. Dammy Brown is a burner. Do we have a – is this a Nico Collins situation? Nope. No, because I oh. – I, Nico, I, I could see being an upper echelon talent, and we would call that out and hope for a better quarterback. Diami is a kind of middling route runner with burner speed, and there were three or four touchdowns that were 100% Sam Howell can't throw the football. It was so similar to when you watched Darnell Mooney with Justin Fields. But when you look at, you know, for a dynasty league, you should pick up Diami Brown. I mean, you should. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah this is somebody fly. that's going to get targets and snaps. Nasty. He's a nasty boy. But when you look at can I find a diamond in the rough long term on this roster that isn't Terry McLaurin, you got to bring yourself to the conversation about Luke McCaffrey, a third-round rookie, 
Um, even if he doesn't profile as a starter this moment, you know, cream rises to the top, right? Yeah, and and I think Luke McCaffrey plays a large role in them wanting to ship him out because this this isn't like they they are still looking for their wide receiver too because I don't think it is Diami Brown. Diami Brown will be on the field, but I don't think he is talented enough to really be who they want to have in that slot in the future. But they had moved Jahan Dotson to the slot. Uh, Luke McCaffrey is more of a slot type player. He was a late transition to wide receiver from quarterback, and he's good. Uh, I, I actually I, I like his tape. Uh, he had good production um, in his final season. He is a McCaffrey, which that that doesn't always mean anything just because you're the son of you know a, a Hall of Fame player. But when you've got like you know multiple multiple great players in the family, that I mean that, it's like the Watts. Right, the Watts, the I mean, yeah, but is he the Austin Rivers of this situation? I I believe he. I mean, he was a third round pick. Ooh. He did not get enough. Is he the pre -draft Seth? Hype. Is he the Seth Curry? Ooh. Ooh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I'm just asking. I, I, he doesn't profile to be some breakout superstar. He's not going to be Christian McCaffrey of wide receivers. <laughs> but I do think he is. Um, I think I think he's a quality player. I, he'll be on the field. He'll have a career and in. Many rookie drafts, I've I've seen him go on draft. Right now, uh, Zach Kias is the slot receiver for the Commanders, and McCaffrey will be competing for opportunity. Terry McLaurin, I you know I moved him up a little bit in the target in the target share. I I am I'm kind of big big in on Terry this year. I I can see that it the Dotson wasn't really factoring in a ton to my projections, so it it didn't really move Terry for me. Dodson ran the fifth most routes oh, in the yeah. NFL last year. Yeah, cardio king. So, um, something interesting. And this offense, it's Cliff Kingsbury. Off offensive mastermind. Oh, I saw something this yeah. morning. Uh, I don't, Kyle, maybe you can shout out who shared it, but there's, um, there's been, a, you know, the commanders have 19 screen passes in preseason, and the next closest team is 10. And nothing screams Cliff Screensbury. Nice. Then that okay. kind of a situation. So I'm really hoping Hayden this Winks, is Hayden Wink shared that. Yeah, really, really hoping this is like a, a hide your cards, hide your you know, hide your hand it's before. Not. No, yeah, it's not. I know. No, he doesn't have it. Like he, he's showing you what he's got all the time. I heard Josh Norris. Uh, he also works with Hayden Winks. Breaking down of his time to throw was lower than anyone else's time to throw last year, and his yards per attempt. Uh, Who was? Jaden Daniels. Oh, I got you. And it, then the yards per attempt was lower than anyone else was last year. It, it, the stat is something like that, but of just like, well, when what, you have nineteen screens, that makes uh, sense. yeah. Like, what what are we doing that's, here? It, well, it's managing a rookie. You know, it, maybe it, it's um it's part of it. Bo Nix was named the starting quarterback for yep. the Denver Broncos. Excited to see that. Um, Sean Payton finally, you know, came out and told us what we knew. It'll be an interesting situation there to see a rookie. It's hard. I mean, it's just hard to start week one and, and be productive, and it's hard to provide fantasy value. We've we've brought that data forward so many times in just you know how hard it is to sustain a wide receiver one that isn't a Hall of Famer, that you don't get double-digit touchdowns from somebody. Like last year we had Cortland Sutton. Despite Russell Wilson, he was a double-digit touchdown guy. That doesn't happen with, happen with this rookie quarterback. It's Denver's not very exciting for fantasy. No. All right. Uh, Elijah Mitchell, J uh, Jordan Mason both returned to practice on Wednesday. So the Niners backup running backs getting healthier before they can get hurt again. And Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen, always uh, part of our news. We like to bring you the positive spin of sports. Um, doesn't believe Rashid Shahid's toe and foot injury would keep him out for an extended length of time. Okay. That's also, to me, a news report on Rashid Shahid's toe and foot injury because I don't think I was aware of that. I oh, am yeah. just happy that missed a little bit of time. we have news of an injury where, to my knowledge, Dennis Allen is not dunking on his player for being injured. <laughs> Did you go watch the whole uh, K Kendry Miller I presser? Because I saw the whole thing now. I didn't see the entire I watched Are, the. I watched the clip. Are we uh, out of context? I, yeah teach me no i mean like because you want to hear the whole thing to get the context and um context is he sucks i mean <laughs> dennis allen is this cross oh, between curmudgeon and unfiltered and worn out and tired stressed he's he comes across as so stressed like he just 
like sometimes, like Mike said it yesterday, don't be that honest. You know, just protect your player. Don't be so honest. You're like, he just constantly was like, I don't know. I don't know what he can do. I got no idea. Yeah. He's never here. I know he's got talent, but I don't know what he can do. I'm a big baby. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break, and we'll jump right in to a uh, – Maka laka ding dong. All right, coming back from the break, uh, we did check Jason's caffeine levels. Uh, they're very high. How's the heart rate? Uh, it's pretty good. I'm at a resting 120. So, <laughs> so you, when you get into a mock draft, though, that's pretty normal, right? Your mock drafts are yep, yep. Never been under 100 in a mock. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's jump in. The fantasy footballers mock draft. Well, this should be a fun one today. 12-team half PPR, quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end flex, and four bench spots. Jason drafting from the number two spot. Mike at the sixth spot. I'm at nine. But uh, we've mixed the uh, the team, the squad, the Foot Clan staff all mixed in, producers and losers alike. Uh, B-Cat, our video guy at number three, Kyle. Kyle's drafting at the five spot. Uh, the Falcon dumping on the seven spot. And then uh, Papa Josh, who uh, he's at 10. And he's yeah. worried about me sniping him. The Falcon is very pumped that Sleeper has a, an app on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can, uh, he Take can do it this with him? Yeah. from his laptop, from his Anywhere. desktop, and you know, from the toilet. I And for those watching on the, uh, the YouTube channel as we kick this draft off, we, I just hit the start button for those watching i was feeling a little bit just a teeny weensy bit like a small part of me just a little bit worried and guilty about maybe focusing so much on his bowel habits right and then i roll into this mock draft today and i'm see i got jason's face i got Ketchin's ugly face i got kyborg uh floating head and then i i'm looking papa josh looking you know elderly and then what do I see? Is the Falcon <laughs> front and center? He's got a toilet avatar. So you know this is what this is the position we put our staff in. Is when we decide what you are, <laughs> you decide to embrace or not embrace it. That is such a long flush. Is that right? Yeah. How are you after you um, had the opportunity to drop the the mailbag drop? Oh, I had nightmares last night. Yeah, yeah, you said you blacked out. We've got the screenshots of you sweating. It was My fun. My skin's still crawling. Yeah, no, you were um, – at least you did it. At least you delivered. You could have gone silent or sprinted out of the room. All right, we're into the mock draft. The first pick off the board, Christian McCaffrey. Sorry, Jason. Ah, oh, darn it. Um, I thought for sure he'd be there for me at two. Th this is really easy. I'm going to make this quick and seamless. There's three top picks in every draft. CMC, Tyreek Hill, CD Lamb. The last uh, time I was near this spot, I took Tyreek. So I'm going to go CD Lamb. Plus, you got Tyreek with the thumb injury. You can call that a tiebreaker if you want. You, there's there's no right answer, so I want to go different. Yeah, I I get it. You're going to get to see how your team turns out that way. Uh, the Lamb contract. It's the thumb injury of financial issues right now, but um, it's not fun. McCaffrey off the board. Jason went C.D. Lamb. Uh, B-Cat goes Tyreek Hill. No fear at number three. Jamar Chase off the board at 104, leaving the Atlanta native Kyle the Homer to take B. John Robinson. Just a reach for, what, for uh, the homer. What a reach. Only because he is an Atlanta Falcons fan. And that is a joke. This is a great pick. B. John deserves to be about that spot in the draft. That puts Mike on the clock at 106. Mike, what are you thinking here in your first round? So it's... Do I start with a hero running back? Do I take Brees Hall? Or do I go with Amon Ross St. Brown? Uh, Amon Ross just so unbelievably dependable at the wide receiver position. I'm looking at his week one line, yeah, by his, the way. Yeah, his sleeper picks line is it's at 87.5 receiving yards. Like it's an over under of 51. It's in Ford Field. We love that early schedule. Yeah, he averaged over 100 yards at home. I, I love that. But I am. I'm going to start with Brees Hall. I hate you. Oh. I hate you. I'm going to start that way and just and see how my mock unfolds. It is the right thing to do. For some reason, at 
one you would go Brees over Amon-Ra? I would, yeah. Okay. And at 109, although I do, you know what? Just to be transparent, I I put feelers out on Amon-Ra on Dynasty League, in our Dynasty League yesterday. Uh, Sorry, not the Dynasty League, okay. in our League of Record. Oh, okay. Because he's a keeper. And I just... I was like, good luck, man. I have not... I've been barking up that I've never had forever. Him. I've never had him on a roster. And I just... I'm so excited about Detroit. I think they're going to win the Super Bowl this year. So, um, I wouldn't have minded the pick, certainly. But Brees Hall just seems so so reliable. I, I wanted you to pass on him because there's always a chance that he makes it to like 108, 109. Brees? Brees. Because yeah, of the happen. fact that like the names, right? I mean, yep. you've got A.J. Brown and... and Amon Ra, St. Brown, and Justin so, Jefferson. Yeah, so Brees goes at 106. Uh, the Falcon went with Amon Ra, St. Brown at 107. It, it, you know, Tyreek and Amon Ra feel so – they just feel so safe. Like, they do feel safer than Jamar Chase feels, those two picks. Would you not agree? It, it, I like mean, Chase I'll, does not feel as safe as Amon Ra and Tyreek. There, I don't know there, that there is as safe a pick as Amon Ra. The ceiling we saw last year when he had, you know – the touchdowns flowing, the type of player he is, you don't necessarily expect him to be a double-digit touchdown guy. Uh, so I, I do worry that he'll come down a little bit, but the the consistency, the, every week you just know you're you're never getting goosed from they Amon can't, Ra. Yeah, their offense doesn't function without him, for sure. Jefferson goes at 108, leaving me on the clock with some options here. Um, this is, I mean, 109 just screams Jameer Gibbs, all offseason. It just seems like the Gibbs decision is there. Uh, we also have A.J. Brown on the board, and that is, those are the two players I am looking at. Is It's Jameer Gibbs. It's A.J. Brown. Papa Josh drafting behind me. Quick turn. You know, you start to look at this point. Do you, you know, do you like what you're taking at running back in the second round, whether Kyron, Saquon, Henry, those guys, A-Chan, or do you like coming back around to the Puka, to the Adams and, and, and Harrison and I I look at that and I, I think A.J. Brown is a tier above those guys and so that's the pick I'm going to make here. I don't go wide receiver first round often but I'm going to do it today. So A.J. Brown off the board giving us six wide outs and three running backs through the first nine picks. Papa Josh went with Gibbs at 110. Saquon off the board next and Garrett Wilson rounding out the first round. Is Garrett Wilson currently a pick that gives you pause. Yeah, for me, he is. I mean, Garrett Wilson didn't finish as a top 30 wide receiver last year, and obviously we're just saying it's completely because the quarterback situation was bad. Yes, I am. But there are plenty of – I mean, are you saying that all of the guys ahead of him had good quarterbacks? Because that's not I'm true. I am saying that every player in front of Garrett Wilson had a better quarterback, yes. Well, that's better, sure. In the, in the sense that you can't be much worse. Than that's exactly that. what I mean is, like, there was bad quarterback, quarterback play all over. There always is. But the Jets was – that was special last year. All right. So, uh, heading into round two should be interesting. We get Marvin going at 201. Again, that feels like where he has been going. Jonathan Taylor at 202. So, a little Saquon, Jonathan Taylor stack for Team 11. Papa Josh pairs Jameer Gibbs. With Puka Nakua at 203, my thought process with Brown was that I'm going to like the running backs coming back to me more. That's what happened. I am very happy to uh, to take a guy that's going to probably go by his teammate many, many times. But I'll take Kyron Williams at 204 in this draft. Pair him with A.J. Brown. Feel good about that. No, I, I love that. I mean, both of those guys, I think, are the type of player that could finish number one at their position that is not being drafted like that, right? You, you don't put A.J. Brown in the CD, the Tyreek category. You don't put Kyron in the Bijan Brees category. But they really are, on a per-game basis, capable of that. Their offense, their talent. I, pairing those two guys together at the back of the first is very nice. All right, teammate went with Olave after my Kyron pick, and then Debo goes to the Falcon, who goes wide receiver, wide receiver, Amon Ra and Debo Samuel. Putting Mike back on the clock, Mike, while you're thinking about that pick, mm -hmm. We did not talk about one thing with the Dotson trade. I drafted A.J. Brown in the first round. It's not that Brown or Devontae Smith would be hurt, but do you look at this as at least a minor upgrade to Jalen Hurts? Oh, yeah. In yeah, the yeah. sense that, like, if an injury happens to those guys, we're not staring down Johnny Wilson to step up and 
provide him fantasy value? I, I, yeah, that that's not even how I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it from that that Dotson will have a couple long touchdowns, and that's that's good stuff for Jalen Hurts. He, so, yeah, I think it's a small upgrade for him. Not enough that I'm gonna make a a move of putting Hurts over Allen, but you know, just it helps things out. So I took Brees Hall with my first pick. Uh, I am going. There, I mean, there's so many guys here that are delightful of you know especially in my my guy category but yeah, give us some of the names of what you're thinking about well i mean you know i don't mind i don't mind the the reach here to take nico in the second round uh you know wide receivers it's london adams iuke that's why that's why to me nico is the pick at wide receiver but where i'm gonna go i'm gonna go high t and despite well, based on yesterday's take. Right. Yeah, you yeah, are. yeah. This, right. is, this yes. is who you are. Mike. Thank you. I've always been this guy. Just clip that out, everybody. And despite it being Jason's my guy. Keep – oh, whoa. I am Isaiah Pacheco. Pacheco is very, very high in my rankings. He is – This was above Henry. This was above HM. Yes. This was above ETN. Like Christian McCaffrey, Bijan, Brees Hall, Kyron. And then after that, I'm – you know – Taking calling your shot of who I think can really finish as a top three guy, and I think that things can bounce right in a volume department for Pacheco for him to finish top three. You two have been the uh, leaders of the Pacheco parade for sure, and um, I'm I'm interested to see how that plays out. Kyborg, uh, let me know now, Kyle. You would have taken Isaiah Pacheco with your next pick, so um, you know Mike got his guy there, even if it's slightly. Which, but yeah, that's early. That's earlier than ADP, ADP, but that's how. It's, some drafts are going to go. I, I mean, I I obviously don't have any problem with that. I love him. I the one that was questionable to me is taking him above Devon Achan. Like I I I would rather I, have Achan. I get it. I get the the rocket fuel, but I'd rather take a guy who I know that he's. I mean, well, he had the fourth highest running back attempt share last year. That's not going to happen. And yeah, I mean, it's a, f a full bet on efficiency, which with Achan, it's not a terrible bet. Pacheco's current sleeper ADP is 303. You got him at 207, so you had to grab him. He would have been gone. Nico Collins goes to Kyle next. Drake Lennon off the board, as he often does in the second round here. And then Bcat with Tyreek Hill in the first, goes ETN in the second. That feels like a pretty good value to me. Grabbing him there, I mean, he could have gone as high as 202, 203, ETN at 210, and then Jason... Um, I see you've already made a pick. You didn't even want to wait for me to like put the ball on the tee. You're like, I'm swinging before the ump is back there. I'm still on the clock with my next pick, but I, I had the strategy coming back to this second and third round turn that I was going to try to take uh, Devon Achan with my first pick and Isaiah Pacheco with my next one. Turned out that when I got on the clock, Derrick Henry was there. I played the ADP game to try to pair Derrick Henry with Devon Achan. Would you, if that so were... So you took Henry. If that were... A, a human in spot one, <laughs> okay, would you yeah. have played the game? I would not have. Okay. I, 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 I would have taken A-Chan there over Henry. Uh, don't, yeah, just don't don't risk that. Yeah, okay. but uh, but it worked out for me. Having C.D. Lamb at the top, being able to pair him with two, in my opinion, stud running backs, Derrick Henry and Devon A-Chan. And A-Chan always feels, look, I, lo I love A-Chan. A-Chan as your running back one is a little tougher pill to swallow. Um, I get that. So as my running back too, I, I, I love it. Would it be easier to swallow if you just switch those picks, but they both went to you still like H and what was the first pick uh, and Henry oh, was the second. Yeah. Yeah. That makes the pill like more H and size. Uh, easier, Henry easier to swallow at two eleven. Then Jacobs and Ayuk off the board. You end up with Devon H and with the second pick of the third round. And then James Cook, another fan favorite goes at three Oh three to B cat pairing James Cook with Travis Etienne. With Tyreek, it's pretty. That's pretty good. Uh, Adams goes next, and then uh, our first quarterback off the board. Kyle goes with. Oh, so he did go Jalen Hurts over Josh Allen. Jalen Hurts uh, at three oh five off the board to go with Bijan and Nico, putting high T, Mister Leatherhead himself, the fantasy hitman on the clock. Brees, Pacheco, and you have the 306. I don't know. I don't want to speak out of turn here, Mike, but based on what you said yesterday, Mixon is. Oh, yeah. He is on, very good at football. He's very good at football. You're high T. I, I would think about it. Running back, running back, running back. I will think about it, 
but we're no longer in that segment, and I don't like Joe Mixon. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's down to two players for me. Ken Bone Walker out of Seattle, who I – you guys almost got a a take swap for Ken Walker. I, I would have liked that. And it was just – I realized, you know, it, trying to talk you into a player over being able to make you say something derogatory or positive about a player – uh, that was too good of an opportunity to pass up. But e but as I went through and I was making my case for Ken Walker again, I didn't adjust my stats, but it just it made me even more confident in his his running back attempt. His share was it, it was top tier before he got hurt. You know he misses a couple games. He comes back, his share goes even higher. It's it just comes down to his eight percent target share. Can the new OC and philosophy can that bump that up to like a ten? Because if he's getting the same share with his explosive nature and a 10% target share, I mean, running back one is easily in the range for him. So it's it's between him and then my my guy who, back to practice, everybody. Great news for Jalen Waddle. I'm really pumped that he is back there. Because I started high T, I'm going to take Waddle. All right. Brees Hall, Isaiah Pacheco, Jalen Waddle is Mike's start to this draft. The Falcon does go Ken Walker with the next pick. Josh Allen off the board, another quarterback uh so two quarterbacks in the third round here putting me back on the clock aj brown kyron williams is my start to this draft um because this is a mock and i think the value is there i'm gonna pull the trigger on a onesie i mean i i oh I told you guys you're, that i was tight in one i told you guys i was comfortable enough with both Laporta and Kelsey, if they got further down the draft board in the third round, and with the quarterbacks going off the board, it knocked them down a little bit. You I'm see, I'm really curious which one you're going to take. I'm going to take Sam Laporta. Wow, I'm going to take Sam Laporta today. I'm I'm neck and neck with those two guys, and uh, we actually I went Laporta, and then Kelsey went next to Papa Josh. So, um, you know, I I am worried about. Like, I think accumulation-wise, Kelsey and Laporta will be really close, but I'm worried about the second half of the season for Kelsey. If this team does what they're supposed to do, lock the division yeah, down fair. and kind of protect Kelsey, mm -hmm. then that's a concern. Yeah, I don't know if you guys realized it, because this is the first time I have. In Sleeper, that's where we're drafting, Kelsey has overtaken Sam Laporta. The ADP has flipped, and I just went and confirmed in the draft kit, you know, looking at – the sleeper ADP, making sure nothing was wild. That has happened. Mm. Now they're they're both. Laporta was a back end second round pick. He's now more of a middle third. And honestly, that is far more palatable to me as well. I've been just completely off with Laporta because in my head, he's dialed in. People are taking him in the middle of the second, maybe a couple picks after, and that's that was too rich. But where you I got don't mind him, it here. I, where you got him, I'm I'm okay with that. You are really hoping he takes a a tear jump. Because it just in points per game, while he was the number one guy, overall for the tight end position, that was a really low points per game, and he needs more receptions and more yards. Well, Kelsey went next, and then Cooper Cup, Evans, Mahomes, Diggs, and DJ Moore. A little disappointed. I was playing a little bit of a game, hoping that somehow, some way, you know, I would see whether it's Evans or Cup swing back around. Cup would have been a, another Ram on my. Kyron roster. So at this point at 404, I am looking pretty strongly at the running back position. Oh. And um, it's not the sexy pick everybody wants to make, but it's the right pick. And so I'm going to take Rashad White in the fourth round. Damn. Rashad White was, uh, we talked about it briefly yesterday. For some reason, there's just like a strong desire to doubt him by the community. And I don't when I watched football last year, I saw a player that was a difference maker on every down for this franchise that made the playoffs and was the uh, best friend of Baker. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Rashad White. Um, you weren't thinking about Malik there, huh? Not really. No, okay. I mean I I just not with Rashad White on the board. DK Metcalf goes next. Devontae Smith to the Falcon, and then we see. Mike back on the clock, Brees Hall, Isaiah Pacheco, Jalen Waddle. So the running backs, uh, I mean, I'm, I have two what I consider top-tier running backs, and it's it's into 
it's it's the dead zone for me of Mixon, Kamara, Aaron Jones. I, I do like James Conner, uh, Montgomery, and Swift. Where it's just because I have two of them, I'm I don't feel the urge to jump into the dead zone. Uh, whew, I mean, it's a Jason my guy parade. Oh, your team's gonna be delightful. <laughs> so Brees Hall, Pacheco, Jalen Waddle, and then looking at my rankings, I have Tank Dell inside my top twenty-four. Yeah, so I think that rounds me out where I, I feel I feel strong enough with that base. So you took Tank Dell. Malik Neighbors goes to Kyle at four oh eight, so uh he's in. And then Kamara off the board at four oh nine. Another, you know, this round, the two running backs that have gone in this round, I think, are the unsexy yet very productive Rashad White and Alvin Kamara. Yeah, it just It doesn't feel good, but it will. It it sh I'm I'm on the side of it should work, but you it it feels like you're waiting. You're just waiting for the shoe to drop of what's going to go wrong. Not me, Mike. No shoes. I, hey. No shoes. I'm not waiting for a shoe to drop on Rashad White. Le I'm less waiting on Kamara. Uh, he'll get a billion receptions. It's it's on more on Rashad White. Um, we'll take that debate into the season. Uh, Katrin goes Trey McBride at 410. So, uh, Jason, you are on the clock now with CeeDee Lamb, Derek Henry, Devon A. Chan, Drafting out of the two spot, I um, I have noticed. You know, you're you've got the quick turn. I've got the quick turn on the other side, as does Papa Josh. I really do enjoy that sometimes. Oh, I, I mean, it, from a predictability standpoint, it's really nice when you're within two picks of the turn and you can look at the team or the two or maybe even three teams that are picking between your pick and your next one. Take a look at their positions. Say, oh, they've already got a quarterback. I I don't need to do that. There's a good chance that they're not going to draft a running back here. Or you know, use that as a as a strategy. It's it's really really nice. I'm here and I'm very disappointed. Uh, the way that I had built my team, starting CD Lamb and then two running backs. The f I love fourth round wide receivers this year. Yeah, uh, you were hoping for I I, I love Tank Dell. I love Devonte Smith. I love DK Metcalf. I love Malik Neighbors. Um, and those guys all just went. Yeah. What happened to your plan? Uh, my plan it's is trash. going a little bit higher T. I, I agree with you, Andy. Two unsexy players who are probably really good picks in Rashad White and Alvin Kamara in the fourth round. They're going to put up a lot of fantasy points in boring fashion. I'm going to draft Joe Mixon, who's going to do the same thing. Oh, we're going fourth round boring. We're going fourth round quality boring running backs. As my running back three, I think Derrick Henry, Devon H. and Joe Mixon, that is a solid core I can kind of rely on, and and now I'll be focused on finding more value at wide receiver through the draft. So you found the testosterone after your first round. The The best part of this year will be when, like, Mike loses to, like, a Rashad White-Mixon combo in somebody's yeah. starting Whoa, whoa, lineup. whoa, whoa. I'm just saying I'm worried about Rashad White. I'm fully out on Mixon. Let's, let's. I just don't. I literally cannot find the capacity to a path that Rashad White's not great. I There's can't. nobody in that depth chart of any uh, that has any impact on Rashad White right now. We feel like that, and which guys, I mean, this was the same thing with Tucker and Edmonds, and those guys are nothing too. Yeah. You're saying that of Bucky Irving? Yeah, I mean, Bucky Irving. He's not a threat to Rashad White. He's a, he might be a compliment, but I not think, a threat. You know, the, the biggest threat to Rashad White is Rashad White. That's my problem. But you have to have somebody that can come in and do something better than him, and I don't think they have anything close to that from a workload perspective. I, I think there is a place in fantasy football for the Rashad Whites, for the Leonard Fournettes. Uh, Leonard Fournette was someone no one ever wanted because he looked so bad on the field later in his career, and he kept scoring a ton of fantasy points. And you kept going, oh, you, you can't keep getting away yeah. with it. Why are you giving them so much work? That's what Joe Mixon's going to do. That's what Alvin Kamara and Rashad White are going to do in the fourth. So after me, Lamar Jackson went, Michael Pittman went, and I I chose to go Mixon because of the wide receivers that were left, the guy that I actually liked the most uh, is a little bit further down in ADP. It was a guy who Andy kind of finally saw the light on. He's a wide receiver too for his team, but he's really good. His quarterback's good. The offense should be good. T. Higgins. See, I didn't know if you were lying or not. <laughs> so you went T. Higgins then at 502 to pair with Lamb as your wideouts with Henry, H. and Mixon. And uh, we'll take a quick break, come back, and talk the rest of this draft. <laughs> oh, 
All right. Jason just took T. Higgins. Amari Cooper went next. I, you know, that decision between those two guys is it, that, pretty the, interesting. That was the decision for me. It was it was between Higgins and Cooper. I like both of those players, but when I look at their quarterbacks, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna take the one I believe in. I thought the pick was going to actually be Mark Andrews because uh, it would have been a fifth round Mark Andrews. You love Mark Andrews and. I suppose the Mixon selection kind of boxed you out of him. Yes, that's exactly right. Mixon being on the board there was too good of a value, but because I was going into the fifth with only one wide receiver, I feel like I can punt tight end easier than wide receiver. All right, Mike, you are on the clock. Who's the selection? So team four took Mark Andrews, and then Kyle took Dalton Kincaid. Mark Andrews was a – that's who I was – I thought was going to fall to me. Uh so now, now the tight end pool is either George Kittle, or for me, you know, essentially punt. Uh, and then at the at the wide receiver position, it would be between George Pickens and Calvin Ridley. Uh, the two of them, I do have Pickens a little bit higher in my rankings between uh, between the two of them. I don't like what's going on with the quarterback situation for Pittsburgh. I mean, not that I believe in Will Levis a whole much more of, but. I, the, you, you can't let it's Andy uneasy. Get, you can't let Andy get Ridley. That is a good point. That that's is, how you want to draft is well. That's spite, how drafts spiting somebody. That's else. how real drafts happen. Real drafts happen when you know the guy next <laughs> to you really wants this dude, and you're like, I'm taking him. I'll take Calvin Ridley. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna take a victory lap that Ridley's a, a 506 at this yeah. point. So. Uh, Connor goes next. I would have taken Ridley this round, though. Uh, Connor course. Connor goes next. Zay Flowers, who is uh, somewhat, you know, been invisible. A little bit, yeah, for, in the, in for the discussions. us. Yeah, and um, so I'm back on the clock. Kyron and Rashad White. Laporta went the onesie, and then Adrian Brown was my first-round pick. It, it, Pickens is jumping out at me as an option here with no Ridley on the board. And then at running back, you know, I could turn – Turn to David Montgomery, Swift, Ramondre, Najee. There's some unsexy options. Or I can go fifth-round quarterback. And um, I'll probably gamble on, you know, one guy getting back to me at quarterback in the sixth. And so I'll take George Pickens. I do believe in the All talent. Right. And he's just, you know, leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the depth chart there. So I'll take Pickens in the fifth round. Consolation Pickens, that sure. is. Sure. Papa Josh goes C.J. Stroud, and then it goes Richardson, Kittle, Aaron Jones, and Kyle Pitts. So four out of five picks, quarterbacks are tight ends. Nice. Uh, which, you know, I was doing the Kyler Murray, Kyler Murray gamble. And it paid off. Stroud, Richardson, Kittle, Jones, Pitts, Ramondre. Uh, I don't want to pick it too quick. Montgomery's still there, but I am going to go with Kyler Murray in the sixth round. Okay. All right, Montgomery off the board next. Uh, we've got Mostert going at oh, that's, 606. That's a great pick. Almost as good as the pick that I am about to make. The Make sure you scroll down, everyone. I, ADP is a powerful, th powerful thing that is right in front of your face. But, uh, Jay, how far away from the football season? Oh, you son of a gun. He's in my queue. No. Rasheed Rice. No. I almost took him last round. Yeah, like, I mean, it would have That's been... where he is in my projections, but I just I looked at I studied the field and I felt that they would not He was so far down in ADP. I just had him in my queue who's yep. he was automatically like I didn't even I wasn't paying attention to this turn cuz I was going to take Rushy Rice here. No, you're it was, not. It was funnier when Ridley was taken from me, right? <laughs> yeah, that was a good goof. <laughs> that was a good nice goof. Um, all right, Mike went with Rashi Rice here. Uh, Terry McLaurin went next to the Borgogan himself and Joe Burrow. So we've had uh, four quarterbacks go off the board in uh, less than a round. Roma Dunze goes off the board at 6'10". And Jason, you're back on the clock with Liam Higgins, Henry H. and Mixon. Yeah, I'm I'm here and I'm a little upset. Uh, Terry McLaurin would have been a great uh, option for me here to go with Higgins and Lamb. Uh, unfortunately, he left at, at wide receiver. The guys that are on the board, I'm not super excited There's about. Still more Chiefs wide receivers you can take. Um, look, Xavier Worthy, I'm fine taking a shot on him. He's an exciting speedster, rookie, 
first rounder for Mahomes. This is a guy I believe in the talent of. I do think rookie year you're going to have Rushy Rice really be like I I like Xavier Worthy in dynasty, but I'm I'm not going to take the shot here. Um, instead, I will go with uh, the wide receiver that Andy besmirched yesterday, Jaden Reed. I don't believe everything Mike wrote for him. I think Jaden Reed is talented. I want shots of good offenses. There was some stuff in that that was really upsetting. Yeah. What, what the, like, I didn't know it was down. Was like, it the hardcore statistics about no, regression? No, it was the subjective opinion about talent. Oh, when you called him mid? <laughs> Why would yeah. you do that, Andy? Yeah. When I said he was uh, finish yeah. and mid and not talented. <laughs> So um, garbage. Yeah. So now here I am. I'm on the clock. So you I, took Jaden Reed. I took Jaden Reed. I'm looking at my options uh, across the board. I've got what I think are three good wide receivers, three good running backs. So I'm taking a look at the onesie positions, tight ends or whatever. Uh, I don't care about them at this point. I'm not going to draft a tight end until late. I'll probably end up with like Pat Fryermuth, and I'm personally fine with that. Um, quarterback, I could stack. CD Lamb with Dak, and that is a little bit exciting to me. Um, I haven't ended up with Dak anywhere. I could also stack Jaden Reed with Jordan Love, um, and then you know play the game for Jaden Daniels later. And a wide receiver, I'm not excited. So I am. I'm going to do that. I'm going to have fun. I'm going to take the Dak CD stack that won people championships last year and hope they stay on fire. I think it's a great pick. I I think it's perfect for your team and I think it's a value so both of those things like clicking the button on Kyler above Dak is still hard for me to do I think Dak is has proven um how dominant he can be for fantasy purposes and then you get the correlation that's great Najee finally goes at 703 great value there again um Pollard off the board and Godwin the next three picks Mike with Brees Hall Pacheco Waddle Dell Ridley and Rice has the 706. This is going swimmingly because I evaluated this turn to see what positions they were going to need to pick. Three of them had a tight end. New Jason uh, always disrespects Shme uh, disrespects Schmevin Schmangram. I, I thought I would be punting tight end too, but in the seventh you round, did. I no way, man. Yeah, I'll you, be taking Evan Ingram. You just did it. You successfully punted tight end. <laughs> I love Ingram. I'm with Mike. Uh, Brock Bowers went next. I mean, where, uh, we where, got where was he last year? I think he was like two or three. Two, two or three. Yeah. Two yeah, because of week eighteen. Before that, he would not have been two. Yeah, but they got rid of some of their wideouts. So. Oh, I, no, I mean I, at this in, point in the just, seventh, I think that's I. I said I'm punting because I figured there was no way that Engram would keep falling. Bowers, who we got word would be available for week one with the injury uh, scare, Kirk goes next. So a couple of jags. Uh, depending on your definition Wars. of that. Jaguars. Go uh, two picks apart. I'm back on the clock. I've taken a couple onesies. It's a little bit different here. Um, Kyler was my pick last round, but I'm going to take I'm gonna take the shot on the rookie. I didn't think he would slip all the way over to me, but I'm going to take Xavier Worthy uh, nice. at 709. Okay. I, I loved what I saw in the preseason. When you talk about he could have half the receptions as Rashi Rice and the same amount of fantasy points. That's the kind of player he is. And uh, the separation – downfield McConkey goes next Zemir White Nick Chubb Javante Williams and Zach Moss going into the eighth round Austin Eckler off the board to Papa Josh at 803 and I am I'm back on the clock boys I'm gonna take the uh discount on Jalen Warren around behind a very uh underrated Najee Harris but Warren's supposed to be healthy and back out there in week one for this team that's gonna run the football with Arthur Smith, and he is the more explosive player and uh, I think the more valuable player. So I'll get him around later. And Addison and Jalen Daniels go next. Yeah, so Jaden Daniels, again, this is this is more, I think, in line of you're going to have people who are willing to go in and reach for Daniels. So you, in your competitive leagues, don't just expect for sure you can get him in, in double-digit rounds. Be willing to go in on him for the eighth. That doesn't bother me. Uh, so I started two running backs and have not taken one since. So that's I got to start uh, bolstering my running back depth. And um, the first one I'm going to go with, I'm going to take Gus Edwards of the Los Angeles Chargers. All the things I've talked about of, you know, high-powered offense with running backs that are drafted late. That's where you go. Oh, 
<laughs> Thank you. That, that's where you want to take some shots. Again, the, I agree with Jason, who just talked about the sleeper pick of J.K. Dobbins. I don't mind that shot at all. It's just I think I think Gus Edwards is a slightly better shot at being the guy. All right, Jonathan Brooks goes next. Hollywood and JSN, and then Jason on the clock after the Dak pick. Yeah, oh, that was throwing it to me? <laughs> it really sounded like you were going to continue talking. Um, Sorry about that. Yeah, no no, yeah, worries. no, you are on the clock. So I want to bring up the Jonathan Brooks pick. I, I, I love it. I was eyeballing him here. I've got three running backs. He could start kind of on the bench. I was curious, though, because this is a pick that I believe that's the – the second running back for for Kyle, and that's that's hard to grab a guy that is not going to play to start the season as your as your running back too. But we're we're in the nasty boys of twenty twenty four here, and if you if you think you have upside in the second half, I think you can try and figure it out. Yeah, that's fine. I'm I'm I wanted to take someone like Lad McConkey. Unfortunately, next time don't defend Kyle, Mike. <laughs> un unfortunately, Lad was gone. I will take Keon Coleman. We never know exactly who the great rookie wide receivers are going to be, but pairing one that was highly drafted with Josh Allen, I'll take the I shot. I feel like on that, that kind of hurt you, it, like, to take like emotionally. Yeah, um, I mean, I could see the path. You want to you want to take shots on good offenses and um, high draft capital players. So that's what I did. Najoku and Singletary go next. Jason, you're on the clock. Um, I, I feel like I have sufficiently punted tight end enough. I would be okay with Pat Fryermuth later. But here in the ninth round yeah. with, with Ferg yeah. Daddy um, sitting there, I will take Jake Turd Ferguson. Christian Watson and Jordan Love go next. Uh, Kai Borg on the clock after that Jonathan Brooks pick. I think he's probably yeah. eyeballing. Yep, no. there he goes. Yeah, Jerome Ford. That is, that's the pick. Jerome Ford. Uh, I mean, he played it right if Jason really was looking at Jonathan Brooks. I would have taken Jonathan Brooks. So, yeah, good job. Uh, Mike, you're back on the clock after the Gus Edwards pick. Uh yeah, so I'm I'm attacking those teams of for running backs. Got Gus Edwards, Zach Moss. He is unfortunately already gone. He would have been my pick in the eighth, and then hoping that I can get Gus later. But I will I'll take the chance on Chase Brown of the Cincinnati Bengals and see if maybe he becomes the guy. Now uh, was that? No, Zach Moss went one round earlier. Yeah. If you want to see the entire draft board, by the way, you can go to our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers and check out the entire draft board. It's a fun way to watch it. A um, couple more quarterbacks going off the board, Goff and Purdy in this round. I am back on the clock. Yeah, the Falcon got Amon Ra and Jared Goff. I was eyeballing one name that I hoped fell all the way through the eighth and ninth round that is still there. And... The only hesitation I would have is the fact that I just drafted a rookie wide receiver two rounds earlier in Xavier Worthy, but I'm going to pull the trigger here. Yes. Uh, I'm going to take Brian Thomas Jr. in the ninth round. 100%. My build didn't allow me to take him. I, were, I was I was debating. That was my debate between Keon Coleman I actually and thought Brian you would, Thomas. I, that was shocking to me that you decided to roll it with Coleman this time. It, it was, uh, again, I'm trying to focus on the offenses. I it, There was Josh Allen versus, uh, you know, Trevor Lawrence that's all it was to me yeah yeah makes uh makes perfect sense there was some some very hyperbolic like uh hype train chatter but just that do tell just more Brian Thomas just oh, just gotcha. just that he uh he might it was something like he might have Jamar Chase Justin Jefferson stuff like that's that was the talk from oh okay. some people yeah, watching yeah. him at camp is that that might be some of the makeup we're seeing uh, Deontay Johnson, Caleb Williams, Trey Benson, Tua, Brian Robinson, and you stupid computer teams. <laughs> Tajay Spears <laughs> Just taking all the quarterbacks. So, uh, looking at the lay of the land here, there is one name I'm going to pick up because I've got a Kyron Williams in the second round, and I'm going to take Blake Corum. Oh, that was who I was hoping made it to me. And I'm going to take Blake Corum at uh, ten oh four, second to last pick, and just. Uh, you know, a, that's do a, a little risk that, mitigation. That is a great pick. It's one of the only ones that I look for pairing because of how late he is. If you can get the the backup who is pretty much locked in as a great fantasy asset should your starter go down and you're getting him in the double digits, it's a wonderful pick. 
Well, thank you, Jason. Goddard and Shakir off the board next. And, Mike, you're back on the clock. You've gone Edwards and Chase Brown, adding to your running back depth. Ingram's on the roster. You're going to have to select a quarterback yeah. over the next two picks. And I, I can't risk it anymore with these absolute scoundrels. Oh, that's and, why you were so mad at snakes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was going to take Tua, and then I'll have Tua Waddle. I'll feel confident about that. Uh, so now at this point, I'm not panicking. Because of all the quarterbacks are going, uh, they're go they're flying off the board. I'm looking at the early strength of schedule and you know trying to project who's got some good games. Baker would fit the mold of Washington and then Detroit. Uh, Matthew Stafford gets Detroit and then Arizona. I think that that is a that's a that's a pretty good opening combo of games. It's it's do I go with those couple games or do I hope that that Justin Herbert is really ready to go for week one. And I think I'm a little nervous about that. So I'm just, I'm going to stream those first couple games with my draft pick and then I will figure it out. All right. Mike went with Matthew Stafford. And then Kyle just, he, he had to, he had to kick me right in the gonads. He hit you <laughs> right in the dowdles. Yes. Um, Rico Dowdle off the board. Rico Suave as Mike calls him. DeAndre Hopkins goes next. Justin Herbert off the board, um, which was a choice for you, Mike. Uh, and then, Jason, you are back on the clock. You're going to make your final two picks here, so just uh, do them back-to-back. -back. Yeah, I need a uh, – I'm going to take a running back and a wide receiver. Both of these I'm looking for high explosive potential that could surprise or get cut. Uh, those are clear to me, and I'm sure that the second one will make it back based on ADP. So I'm going to take Jamison Williams to start. hope that he finally does what he should have done. <laughs> on the NFL field as the wide receiver two for a, for another great offense. And then at running back, J.K. Dobbins, I brought him up on the sleeper episode. That To me, he's a perfect last-round pick in the sense that week one, he's either going to be like the starter and really involved, or he's not. And then I'm, I either have a really nice pick for a good offense that wants to run the ball a lot, or I know exactly who I'm swapping out on the week one waiver wire. So Dobbins will uh, bolster my roster. All right, I like that. Final pick, Dobbins, is going to be a common theme, I think, in all of our drafts this year. Polk, Hawkinson, Dobbs, Mike, your final selection, anybody you want. So Just my, don't take the guy I want. I hope I do. My wide receiver crew, it's really solid of Jalen Waddle, Tank Dell, Calvin Ridley, Rasheed Rice. So I don't – looking at the players who are at the top of ADP, you know, Curtis Samuel, Tyler Lockett, Jacoby Myers, even Josh Palmer, I'll throw him in there of – they're they're stabilizers, but I don't think that at this point they're gonna they're gonna really take off and become something huge. And it, them cracking, you know, over my lineup over those four guys, if everything goes to plan, not very likely. So with that said, I'm gonna look at Adonai Mitchell from the Colts has been getting uh, pub as a rookie wide receiver, uh, but I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the shot on the first round wide receiver. I will take Xavier Lee Getz and hope that he is ready to go and hope he can help turn around the Carolina offense. Zeke goes next, who would have been in consideration. He went to the Falcon, Charbonnet, uh, with Team 8, and I was hoping this would happen. You got my, your guy. My final pick in this draft, I don't draft to trade, except for maybe one guy. Because I know. I know how fantasy players get when they don't have a tight end. And sometimes... One big game <laughs> gets you the opportunity to trade away a tight end. And ta uh, Taysom Hill yeah. will be the pick, multi-positional uh, opportunity. Yeah, I hear there's other platforms that are adopting. They're moving Taysom back to tight end eligible. Yahoo did it this morning. Right. So um, Taysom Hill at 11.09. Like I have done – like I've, ha I've picked up Taysom, had him blow up, and traded him before. Like, that's been a part of the Taysom experience. So if you catch lightning in a bottle in week one, why not? Well, in this one, Papa Josh is in the league, and so, you know, know, know your league. He would have been gone with the next pick. Um, Curtis Samuel, who the team is saying they hope will be back for week one, uh, goes with the third to last pick. Lockett, kind of a moment there with Lockett, having him go almost as Mr. Irrelevant in the draft. Um I don't know if the retirement ceremony is too soon for him or not. We're going to find out whether uh, the JSN take was way off base and then Friar Muth with the last pick in the draft. So running these teams back, again, you can see the entire draft board on the YouTube channel. 
I'm sure we'll share some graphics out. My team at wide receiver, A.J. Brown, George Pickens, Xavier Worthy, Brian Thomas Jr. Feels a little thin, but also top heavy, a little bit hero wide receiver there. Kyron Williams, Rashad White, Jalen Warren, and Blake Corum at my running back position and my onesies. Kyler Murray, Sam Laporta. I guess it's not a onesie if you take two of them. Uh, <laughs> Taysom Hill also on the roster as an extra quarterback, tight end, and whatever else they want to classify him as. Uh, my onesies, I've got the stack in Dak and Jake Ferguson. Super stacked with C.D. Lamb. Then I've got T. Higgins, Jaden Reed, Keon Coleman, and Jamison Williams. With Derrick Henry, Devon A. Chan, Joe Mixon, and J.K. Dobbins at running back. At running back, I've got Brees Hall, Isaiah Pacheco, Gus Edwards, and Chase Brown. My wideouts are Jalen Waddle, Tank Dell, Calvin Ridley, Rasheed Rice, and then Evan Ingram. Uh, oh, and, and Xavier Leggett. I apologize. Uh, Evan Ingram and Stafford. Uh, like, so people ask us all the time, where do you really want to draft? Aside from the Stafford pick, this is my favorite team that we've mock drafted so far this year. So right, if you would, taken, I guess I like the six. Yeah, if you had taken Jaden Daniels a little bit earlier, you'd be or even just with this. just uh, you know like Goff or Goff Purdy or Tua in in that selection instead of Stafford. Like could happen in a lot of drafts. Would love it. All right, if you didn't know, in addition to being the number one fantasy platform, Sleeper also has DFS picks. You can download the app. Now and use the code BALLERS to get a 100% deposit match. Terms and conditions do apply. So um, let me just get a thumbs up, thumbs down from the Deucer's Alley over there. Let's see what the confidence level is with the, the selections today. Uh, we uh, got a thumbs uh, down. Falcon doesn't we got, like his We got team. some sideway thumbs. We, we got, got no thumbs ups. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Good so, work, boys. That's the confidence that Good we have built, built up in them. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's the, the peak the their real, thumbs go. A real Dennis Allen situation. <sighs> How dare you? I hey. I think you do great work, Mike. I think you do great work, Thanks, Jason. Andy. You know beautiful team. It's unfortunate when you're injured, but you're still part of the team. That's what I have always <laughs> said. Uh one more reminder here at the end. Actually, two more reminders. The uh Megalobowl available at megalobowl.com. Come play with the Foot Clan. Um uh, also Shout out to our friends at Sleeper for sponsoring our 10th anniversary Megala show live in LA. Tomorrow. Th this, yeah, it's tomorrow. I shouldn't say this Saturday. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Be there. Don't forget. If you have tickets, don't forget to go. Yeah, please come if you bought tickets. <laughs> like, that's important. It's LA. Beat the traffic. Uh, this Saturday, yes, tomorrow, Palace Theater, uh, ballerslive.com if you want some more tickets. And a shout out to Pristine Auction because they provided us with amazing yeah. prizes to give away including uh, just tons of signed jerseys, signed helmets, and we're even doing a silent auction to raise money for Fantasy Cares live at the event on top of all the giveaways. So mm -hmm. it's going to be really, really fun. And if you're in the L.A. area, there are a handful of tickets remaining. I believe there is a BOGO right now on the mezzanine seats. Could be. Buy one, get one for the remaining couple mezzanine seats. So you can check that out at ballerslive.com. I think we did it. MVP episode next week. The Fantasy Time Machine next week. Don't miss it. And good luck in all of your drafts this weekend. Thank you for listening, everybody. We'll see you soon. Goodbye. You can be better than the deucers. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.